How to use AI to build a directory website like this. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use lovable.dev and remix a public project and then tailor it to your use case with your data. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to remix my own directory website containing AI agents and automations, hook it up to your super base and populate it with your data so that you can spin up a landing page directory like this in just 30 minutes. And this kind of website is really handy for businesses, for example, for or lead generation, you could put up a directory in your niche that drives relevant users to your website. So here is the public version of this website, free AI agents and automations available at agents.sabrina.dev. The first thing you're going to do is sign up for Lovable. You can think of Lovable as your AI agent coder. It's really great for simpler web apps like this. Go to lovable.dev, sign up for a free plan, and then you're ready to go. One of the really cool features about Lovable is that you can remix other people's projects if they make them public. So if you scroll down on the Lovable website, you can see a bunch of different projects that you can remix and make into your own version. All you have to do is go to the project site for the directory. This is the URL, lovable.dev projects, and then this unique ID. When you're logged into Lovable, you're going to see this top bar that allows you to remix this project. So go ahead and click Remix, click Remix again, and then Lovable is going to set it up. Okay, while we're waiting for that, you'll also want to sign up for this website called Supabase. You can think of it as your database for the project. For a directory website, you need a place to store all of that information to be displayed in the directory. So we're going to use Supabase for that and connect it to Lovable. Go to supabase.com and sign up for it for free. Okay. Once you're done signing up for Supabase, we're going to create a directory of dog toys and display it on our website. What you're going to do is open a new conversation with ChatGPT, enable deep research, okay, and then paste in a prompt like this. Output a CSV of dog toys with these columns. The categories column should look like this, an array of tags, so that it can be imported as a JSONB column type into Supabase. What this means is like this categories column over here, we want a bunch of categories. We want people to be able to filter those categories and so that's why we want it to look like this so go ahead and click enter and then ChatGPT deep research always asks you a bunch of questions here I'm going to say max 30 dog toys and random for all of the answers right we just want a sample data set when it's done you'll get something like this you know what you'll want to do is click copy then open up notepad or something in your computer where you can uh, create a text file here in notepad we're going to paste that CSV okay and then go ahead and save it as dogtoys.csv. Okay, so this is what we're going to import into our database. Now go to Supabase and we're going to start a new project. Okay, project name could be, say, dog toys. Generate a password for the strong password. Make sure you save that somewhere and then click create new project. Okay, you're going to see kind of an intro page like this. Welcome to your new project. Get started by building out your database. So go ahead click table editor. This is going to be your database. So if you're familiar with Airtable or Notion or even Google Sheets, uh, you can think of this kind of like a spreadsheet containing all of your data. So first you're going to create a table. So this would correspond to like a sheet in Google Sheet. So create your first table. Let's name it dog toys. And if you scroll to the bottom here, these are the columns for your table. We're going to click import data from CSV and then upload the CSV file. Okay. And you can preview everything here so it looks good, like the title of the toy, the description, the categories should look like this, an array of strings, URL, made by, and the price. Go ahead and click Save. You'll want to select one of these columns as the unique primary key. Let's use Title. Okay, check that off. Okay, and then click Save. So this is going to import that CSV of dog toys into our Supabase database. Okay, and just like Google Sheets, you can make edits on individual rows. You can expand this row, make edits here, and save it, etc. Okay, so we've got our data, we've got our database, and then we have remixed the Lovable Directory project. So now we need to connect our data to this directory project and then customize how it looks and the text so that it's tailored to our dog toys website. So the first thing we're going to do here is connect Supabase. So at the top right corner, you'll see this icon, manage Supabase. Click that. Okay. Click connect Supabase and then go through the process to authorize it. 
just click authorize. Okay, and if it authorized correctly, it should look something like this. This will be your Superbase organization name, and these will be the projects. You will have only one project so far called Dog Toys. Click connect. Okay, so now it is connected. Go ahead and confirm by clicking connect again. Okay, and if everything's successful, it should say connected in green over here. Your AI coding assistants also summarized the connection over here. Now the project's actually refreshing, okay? So it's failed to load automations because uh, that's not the data we're using anymore. So we're gonna type here at the bottom left. This is where you tell your AI coding assistant what you want it to do. So we're gonna say update uh, the entire website to use the dog toys table. In Superbase, I am building a dog toys directory website. Just a little context we're adding in. Okay, go ahead and click enter. And it can take a while for Lovable to uh, finish completing everything, but it's still really good practice to read what it's doing, read about the changes it's making so that you can better understand how to work with it. And here's Lovable thinking, right? So it's thinking about how we're going to proceed. It's going to update a bunch of code in the original project we remixed. Remember, we're starting with an existing Lovable project, which is my directory of AI agents and automations. And we're remixing that into a dog toys directory. So instead of displaying automations, we're going to be displaying dog toys. Scroll down here. When it says error build unsuccessful, this can happen, especially when there are a lot of changes involved like this. So just go ahead and click that and then click try to fix it. Lovable will analyze the error and try to implement a fix. Now there is an issue because we're not still not seeing any dog toys displayed. So I'm going to go ahead and take a screenshot of this, drop the screenshot here. So this is really cool because you can give the AI coder agents screenshots of what you're talking about. There are still no dog toys being displayed. There are still no category being displayed. I highly recommend reading through what the AI coder agent is investigating and implementing. So here it's analyzing the logs to figure out what could be the issue. It found that the super base query, meaning trying to retrieve our data from the database, is returning an empty array. So that's why there's no dog toys being displayed. So the conclusion of our AI agent is actually that the dog toys table is empty, even though we know it's not. So maybe there's like an access issue, right? And it's complaining that it doesn't have an ID column, which is like a unique identifier for each row. So let's go ahead and fix both of those things. If you get errors like this, you'll know how to debug them. So go to our super base table over here and right click on the table, click edit table, and we're going to add an ID column name. Okay, name is ID, type is UUID. This is a universally unique identifier. And the default value is going to be randomly generated by Superbase. So go ahead and click save. Okay, so now we have a unique ID for each row, but that doesn't solve the issue of Lovable not being able to access our table like it thinks it's empty. So go ahead and click edit table again. And you can see here exactly what the problem is. You need to create an access policy before you can query data from this table. Without a policy, querying this table will return an empty array of results. And that is why Lovable is not able to fetch anything from our Superbase table. So one easy fix is to disable row level security like this, just disable it, right? But you will get a lot of warnings. So what we're gonna do is add a policy, go back to the table, click add RLS policy. You're gonna see this, click create policy. And there's a bunch of defaults here already. Let's name the policy read, okay? And then keep it at select. You can see on the right-hand side, enable read access for all users. So go ahead and click on that. What this means is that Lovable will be able to read our database, but won't be able to update our database, which is fine for a directory. Okay, click save policy. Okie dokie, and now let's go back to Lovable, refresh the page, and boom, now we have all the dog toys, so that was it. So the reason why I showed that is so that you don't freak out if you see errors like this. Also, you can ask ChatGPT about this error. Like literally, I would probably copy paste like this whole, this paragraph here, the conclusion of the AI coding engineer and ask ChatGPT like, how do you debug this? But yeah, that's probably the most common issue when connecting Superbase with Lovable. So now you know how to fix it securely. So now we have our data populating, but the entire site says free AI agents and automation. So we wanna change that. Update the theme and text of the website to be related to awesome dog tail toys. Also, the category are not displaying 
on the left side. Now I'm being a little lazy in my prompting on purpose just to show you that you don't need like ridiculous crazy prompts to get this working. Even in this last example, honestly, best practice would be to separate this out into two separate prompts, right? One task and update the theme and text. Another task is to fix the categories, but you'll see that you can still get pretty far even if you're not super strict with your prompting. The important thing, honestly, is just like reading through what it's thinking about. And you don't have to understand everything, but just having like the overall sense of what it's trying to do and what it's changing is really, really helpful for debugging and also improving your own confidence working with AI coding tools. You can see here, this is its plan to implement an awesome dog toys theme. It involves seven different things. It's even choosing a new color palette, primary, secondary accents. Okay, nice, much better. So awesome dog toys. And again, this was with my pretty lazy prompt, right? But you can see the first part worked really well, but it still didn't fix the toy categories on the left. So now we're going to fix that. So let's go back to our table. What I'm actually going to do is take a screenshot of this column, drop it in here and be like the toy category sidebar should be displaying the categories uh, column from Superbase. Right now, the toy category sidebar is empty. And by the way, you can test out the prototype while it's implementing stuff. So let's see if we, the search bar works, if we search Kong. Okay, awesome. So the search bar works great, right? Click enter again to clear the search. See all our data here. Once we fix this categories filter, we're pretty much good to go with this directory or website. So I'll show you how to deploy it. Another thing I'll say is that you could definitely build this entire thing from scratch too. Like you don't actually need to remix an existing project, but I wanted to showcase the remixing functionality because it is pretty neat. You can browse what other people have done and then remix it into your own version. But with this kind of simpler type of web app, you definitely could have built it from scratch in Lovable too. All right, now Lovable fixed our toy categories. You can see it's like whole thought process over here on the left hand side. And again, my prompt is fairly simple, right? Very non technical. Like this is what I see in the database dropped in a screenshot. This is what I see in toy categories, like something doesn't match, right? Um, not really more complicated than that. And you can go ahead and click one of these like chew or dental and you can see the dog toys. So let's say chicken. Okay, so it actually applied all three filters, the search, the chew category, and the dental category. And that's pretty much it for our website. You can add in a ton more data, obviously. This was just a sample data set. If you want to add more columns to the data within Superbase, just think of it as a, like a way more secure and robust Google Sheet. Uh, so click plus, this will add a new column. You can always edit any particular row, delete rows if you're just testing stuff out. One thing I'll mention as well, before we deploy is the version history for the project. So if you click this clock over here, view history, for example, let's say you get stuck on something and you need to roll back to a previous version that was working. This is where you can do that. Okay. Now the last step is to deploy and publish this. So go ahead and click publish in the top right corner. Okay. If you want to publish it to a custom domain, click manage and you can either buy a new domain or connect an existing domain. If you click connect domain, you're going to see this pop up to upgrade your plan. So on the free plan, you can't deploy this on a custom domain yet. But let's say you upgrade. The next step is you can actually just choose which domain provider you're using. For example, GoDaddy, it'll ask you to authenticate your GoDaddy account and you can just choose which domain you want to connect from a dropdown. So Lovable makes it super, super easy to deploy this on your custom domain. You don't have to go into GoDaddy or your provider and figure out DNS records or you don't have to change anything like that. You can just connect it directly. For now, let's just publish it on the free domain. So just click publish free directory dash page s95 Lovable app and you'll be able to see it deployed on this free domain. To recap, in this video, I showed you how to remix an existing lovable.dev project and then connect it to your own Superbase containing your data and then customize the project so that it fits your use case for the directory. Hope this was helpful. Hit like, hit subscribe, and drop a comment below. I would love to hear from you.